Originally, I wasn't going to make a video about the EVH5150 Iconic. I mean, at this point, you have likely been inundated with countless Iconic videos both in favor of and, oddly, vehemently against this amplifier. Well, I put it to a vote and you amazing viewers showed an overwhelming amount of interest in my take on this amplifier, so I bought one. Now, I didn't know what to think when it showed up, and after many hours tinkering, testing, and comparing it with my OG5150 block letter, I have some thoughts. And I gotta tell you, I think a lot of people are wrong about this amplifier. What's up everybody, welcome to the channel. My name is Taylor and you guys asked for this, so here it is, the EVH5150 Iconic. Now, let's start with the actual definition of Iconic. What exactly is this amp telling us with its name? What is an icon? Oxford defines it as a person or thing worthy of veneration or great respect. Now this is an Eddie Van Halen amplifier, and while no one would argue that he and his legacy are truly iconic, I believe with the throwback design, black chicken head knobs, and stencil 5150 logo, it's safe to say that what this amp is saying is that it is an ode to the great legacy of not only EVH, but the 5150 amplifier as a whole. As a matter of fact, it was released 30 years after the first 5150, which is arguably one of the most iconic amps in the heavy metal genre. Now, there are a few things we should know about Eddie Van Halen and the original PV5150 before we can accurately assess the EVH5150 Iconic. Eddie was a true pioneer in the world of gear tinkering and pushing what was available to its absolute limit. He originally achieved the infamous brown sound by using a Variac voltage regulator so that he could crank all the settings on his Marshall, but run the amp at a lower power setting and thus maintain a reasonable volume. Because if you've ever heard a Marshall cranked all the way up, it is way too loud, dangerously loud. So he would lower the power settings with a voltage regulator to get his amp down to a reasonable volume, and Eddie ended up with an amp manufacturer by the name of PV, who was known for making affordable tube amplifiers. Now, I'm skipping a lot here. There's his time using Soldano amps, and of course the back and forth with not only the original 5150 designer, but also the 5150 iconic amp designer, James Brown, and there's a whole lot of content to get into there, but that's for another time. The point that I want to get to is there was a very clear goal Eddie had with the original 5150 design Design, and that was to make it an affordable version of the amplifier that captured his tone. Now, I can't find out exactly what the retail price was back in 1992 when this amplifier came out, but according to an old archive musician's friend ad, it was $749 new at one point. So adjusting for inflation, we're probably somewhere in between $1,000 and $1,500 equivalent in 2022 money, depending on what the actual retail price in 1992 was. If you know what the actual retail price was in 1992, please let me know down in the comments. It would really add some valuable context to this discussion. So with all that in mind, there are really two things we need to take into consideration when evaluating the 5150 Iconic. Is the tone as good as the original amplifier that it is paying homage to? And is there a good value proposition with this amplifier? Alright guys, I have my Deviant Guitars Grim War. It has an EMG 81 in the bridge, 85 in the neck, plugged in to the 5150 Iconic. I have a plethora of pedals today. I just thought we'd try out a bunch of different ones. Uh, I'm running into the Noise Suppressor. I have an Ibanez TS9. I have a prototype boost I am designing with my friend Shay from This Heavy Earth Effects. And then I also have a Fort and Grind. That is going into the, actually let's switch over to the green channel here. And of course we will shoot these out in this video, uh, both in a mix and then we'll isolate them as well. So that way you can really, really hear them back to back and hear how much of a difference there is between them. I'm sure there are a lot of you clean dorks out there that wanna hear this. So uh, let's just turn the reverb all the way up and you can hear the clean channel. 
That's it for the clean channel. Let's just max out the gain knob here and see what it sounds like with the gain max. So you can really do anything from cleans to like classic sort of rock style breakup with the green channel. But then we also have this overdrive switch here. Let's turn that on and hear what that does to it. So we're getting a lot more into metal territory, my territory, probably your territory too. Uh, and you know, we're only at four here on the gain setting. Let's turn this guy all the way up and see how saturated we can get the green channel on this amplifier. Sounds really good, I like it a lot. I like the green channel on the original 5150 also. One of the things that I actually really like to do is take a tone that's a little bit drier like this and then hit the front of it with a boost and just turn up the gain just ever so slightly on the boost pedal and I find that that makes a nice balance and a really mean beefy tone while still remaining pretty tight. So let's actually dial this gain back a little bit and just dry it up, maybe like somewhere about there. Uh, let's try the fort and grind and see what that sounds like. Dial back the top end here a little bit. I like that tone a lot. Um, I think that's really cool. Very, very mean. Let's try another boost in front of it here. Let's try this overdrive I'm working on with Shay. It's called the Boomstick, by the way. We're gonna set the EQ very normal there. This boom actually cuts out the low end. I don't really want it to cut out the low end, so we're gonna turn that pretty much off. And with this pedal, there is a constant mid boost, and this bite knob will shift the mids. Set it about there and see what it sounds like. I'm playing so loud, I actually vibrated a pedal off the shelf up there. All right, back to the chugging. <laughs> Fucking rips. <laughs> Dude, I... <laughs> All right, I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, I need to move on here, because I'll just around all day. The TS9 is a classic. I think it's one that everyone's familiar with, so that's why I included it. <laughs> Green channel might be my favorite channel on this amp, but uh, let's move over to the red channel here because there's a whole other channel with a whole other gain structure modification that you can make to it. But god damn does the green channel with the overdrive engaged sound really good. Like really good. Switch channels here. Uh, let's turn this boost off for now. And I can also demonstrate how this noise gate works here. 
So you can hear there's a bit of noise with this amp, even though I'm running a noise gate in front of it. And using this noise gate on the amplifier actually just helps cut that noise down. This is about where I set the gain on the red channel on my original 5150. Um, so let's hear how much gain that is. Let's just turn the burn switch on and that way you can hear how much gain that actually adds. Okay, so when you activate the burn switch, uh, it sounds more in line to me with the OG5150. Let's do the same thing here. Let's see how much gain we can get out of the burn channel. It's a lot. Here's the gain at max with the burn setting on. Okay, so like you can hear, there's more than enough gain to go around. Um, I would say that once you start really pushing on the gain with this amplifier, uh, it gets a little bit more compressed. Not necessarily a bad thing, um, especially if you like playing with a lot of gain that could actually be desirable in a lot of cases. But let's test out these overdrives on the red channel here real quick. Uh, I'm gonna dial back that gain to about four there. That's what it sounds like. Okay, let's start with the grind. Not my favorite one with this amplifier, surprisingly. I really like the grind with the original 5150, but uh, a little bit shrill with this amp. Let's try the boomstick. It's just a little bit too much gain. It's a little bit too much compression. Uh, we're almost like getting HM2-esque with that. Uh, I have a feeling it's gonna be really similar here with the TS9, but let's just try it. TS9 is a little bit better. The grind and uh, the boomstick there just sound like they're hitting the front of the amp a little bit too hard and just pushing it into almost like fuzz territory. Maybe let's turn the gain way down here and turn the burn switch on and see what happens with the TS9. Maybe let's, uh, I know I like a lot more low end than most people, so I'll dial this back for those of you that aren't as into the low end. See what that sounds like. <laughs> bad. I think that burn switch is almost just like adding in the amount of gain that I kind of expect from uh, my OG block letter here. And then another really cool feature that this amp has, which it has many cool features, but uh, we can always go into quarter power mode here if we want to push the power tubes a little bit more, get a little bit more saturation out of those guys. So let me show you. I think it's really cool that this amp includes that feature. I really like that feature in amplifiers where you could just dial back the power and then turn up the volume to sort of push the power tubes a little more. I don't think it's like a massive difference in tone, but it is very noticeable when you're playing it. Okay, let's hook up the OG block letter here. Uh, we'll compare some of these different pedals on the block letter and then we'll get to the shootout. I've never been able to get this amp to do really any clean tones at all, so uh... It's the extent of the clean there. Let's turn the crunch on, let's turn the bright on. Let's turn the gain up to about five. Let's turn the gain all the way up and compare. My knobs are very noisy. This is an old amplifier. I 
I really like the green channel on this amplifier a lot. I think a lot of times when people play 5150s, you know, they automatically go to the high gain channel, but the green channel might be the better channel on both of these amplifiers. Uh, let's dial back the gain to about there so it's like a little bit drier. And let's hit it with these different boosts. Foreign grind sounds pretty decent. Let's go with the boomstick. I really like the boomstick into the green channel a lot. I gotta move on here. I'm gonna get totally sidetracked and just keep uh, messing around with that. Uh, TS9. like the TS9 too. Uh, I like the boomstick a little bit more. Maybe that's just because I helped design it. I'm a little bit biased. Um, let's go over the red channel here. That's usually where I rock the gain on this channel. Um, of course, you can get tons of gain on this amplifier. It's kind of ridiculous how much gain it has. Do the fort and grind. You know what? I might not actually like the fort and grind into this amplifier as much as I thought, if I'm being honest. Boomstick. Okay, classic TS9. There's a reason the TS9 is a classic. I think out of all these different configurations, the TS9 is the one that sounds the most consistent. Um, here, let's dial this bass back a little bit. That way you can hear it a little bit more how most people would dial it in, I think. Okay, so quickly just jumping between these two amplifiers, uh, some things that I noticed that you probably won't be able to hear on the other side of this video, you know, once it gets uploaded to YouTube and everything. The headroom is really obvious to me. The 5150 Iconic, um, especially in quarter power mode, obviously, has significantly less headroom, you know, it just doesn't sound as open. It sounds a little bit more compressed, but I gotta be honest, tonally, I think they're really similar. I noticed that when I'm dialing in the 5150 Iconic and just, you know, having used my old school 5150 for so long, it reacts in the way that I've been conditioned to expect it to from using this 5150. But let's be objective here. Let's compare these in a shootout. I'm gonna use both the green channel on the 5150 with the crunch enabled, as well as the green channel on the 5150 Iconic with the overdrive enabled. I'm gonna set the settings exactly the same on both of these amplifiers just to see how close they really are. All right, let's do that now.
All right, guys, I'm gonna level with you. I don't think $1,000 is necessarily a budget amplifier. I would use the word budget to describe something like the Bouguer line of amplifiers, but that's not really what I'm after here because if how much something cost was the only concern, well then, the Iconic certainly missed its mark. However, like I mentioned earlier with the price of the original 5150 and adjusting for inflation, this head may actually be cheaper in 2022 money than the original PV was in 1992 money. Sure, it has plastic jacks on the back of the amplifier, Two spots on the signal path that would typically house tubes were replaced for more cost-effective solid-state components. Clearly, there were some decisions made to keep this amp in the cost-friendly category. However, considering this amp has a built-in noise gate, a reverb, a cab-emulated XLR output, foot switchable solo boost, and a power amp mute switch, meaning you can play this amp quietly in your bedroom at night without waking up your mom's boyfriend, Todd, who smells like a mixture of brute aftershave and menthol cigarettes, and... Wait, what was I talking about again? Oh yeah, the features. There are enough features on this amp that some of the choices that may seem like budget cuts don't feel as important. I guess what I'm getting at here is that I think the right decisions were made with this amplifier to get it to its intended audience. The next generation of guitar players that may just be starting out and need a versatile enough amplifier to cover many aspects of music creation in 2022. Enough power to play shows? Check. Flexibility in the studio, or let's face it, the more likely scenario, your bedroom with an Ikea desk and laptop? Double check. A brand name that has a good reputation in the industry and makes reliable equipment? You can see where this is going. I get it. The EVH demo was, well, let's just say it was pretty shrill. It did not impress me either. But here's my take on this. I think it has more to do with the actual cabin speakers versus the amplifier itself. Let's assume this amp had a pretty tight set of guidelines, meaning we want these features at this budget. Well, if I was James Brown, the amp builder, not the singer, I would probably want to heavily flow that budget into the head and try and get the most cost-effective speaker and cabinet combination possible. Because let's face it, the 5150 amplifier is what's iconic, not the cabinet. Unless you're one of those weirdos who actually likes the PV5150 4x12. In that case, sorry. All right, guys, if you have made it this far, thank you. If you liked this video, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving me a comment. And if you really like what I do here on my channel, then join my YouTube members or my Patreon. There's more information on that down in the description below. And with all that said, stay safe, stay metal, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.